Hi, welcome to the first part of a series of three videos about planning lessons for progression in design and technology. The videos support section three of the Learning to Teach Design and Technology Education fourth edition textbook, which has been edited by Alison Hardy. The books are called Text for All Those Training to Teach Design and Technology in the Secondary School. And each video is going to be released on a weekly basis over the next few weeks. The final video release will be followed by the webinar, A Conversation About Teaching Design and Technology, where you can meet the three authors and raise specific questions for discussion. So in this video, um, I'm going to be talking to you about Chapter 12, Planning Lessons in Design and Technology. Um, and my name is Sarah Davis, and I'm the author of the chapter. So this chapter aims to support beginning teachers with their knowledge and understanding of lesson planning um, by introducing the reader to the traditions and principles of planning. And this is all specifically related to individual lesson plans. And so in the video, um, I've split the video into three parts and we're going to start off by talking about the role that lesson planning plays in a beginning teacher's developing practice. Then we're going to discuss in more detail the key elements within a lesson plan and start a conversation about how we use the lesson plan to evaluate our teaching and therefore develop our future planning skills. So why do we need to, to plan lessons? Well, lesson planning, um, as any teacher will tell you, is an essential part of their role. Um, and it's the part of, of, of kind of a teaching cycle. Um, because we'll talk, or your, your teachers will talk to you, and schools will talk to you, about the fact that we, we plan, teach, and evaluate the lessons that we teach. This is a cyclical process. But for a beginning teacher, we have to start off with the first plan for the first lesson that we teach. And so it's planning of individual lessons that where you're likely to definitely start as a beginning teacher. And planning those lessons helps you consider what pupils want to, you know, what you want pupils to learn, how you're going to present the information, how you're going to motivate and engage them, how you're going to monitor their, their progress and mundane things like what resources you're going to need. And part of our understanding of these things will come about um, or become more kind of solidified, if you like, when we evaluate how the lessons have gone. So it's very much this kind of cyclical process. But we start first with planning that first lesson, as I said before. And how do we plan it? We write it down. We, we write down on a sheet of paper what we want um, what we want to do in the lesson in stages. And this type, of, this type of writing about our lessons often has a format um, in the shape of a lesson plan. Now, I'm suggesting that at this point you pause the video and either download or get your hands on a copy of the lesson planning pro forma or template that is used by your school or your initial teacher education provider or you can go to the web address here, which is tinyearl.com backslash sdsdavis dash proforma. And you'll be able to download a blank copy of the planning format used for the example lesson in chapter 12, so that you have a example, an example of a lesson planning template to refer to throughout this video. So I'm raising the, the question here, you know, why plan? And I talk in the chapter about lesson planning and question whether it's a technical process or a knowledge-based activity. Now, in the chapter, I conclude that it's actually a mixture of both. Hence, my um, drawing of it here on a set of scales. So when we first start teaching, as a beginning teacher... Um, or sometimes when an experienced teacher is teaching a new scheme of work, we need a system for thinking about what goes into each individual lesson. And this is where a lesson planning template or pro forma comes in. At the start of, of teaching, 
we favour the idea that lesson planning is more of a technical process because we're focused on answering the questions on the form and filling it in. And those lesson plan um, templates, pro formas, have been created by people that have been teaching for a long time. Um, for example, teachers in your school, your mentor in your school, myself as a, as a practitioner of design and technology education and a teacher educator with many years experience. So you're not expected to sort of develop a lesson plan from a blank sheet of paper. There are these, these sort of boxes and templates that you can use, which unfortunately can make planning feel like a sort of technical process, that it's just the job of filling in the boxes. But those boxes are there to start you thinking about this process of planning and starting to think more deeply about how we teach different topics and the different activities and structures to lessons that we need to put in place to make that effective. You teach lessons, the more you'll start to appreciate the lesson planning process. And we can see the scales have tipped here and shifted towards lesson planning um, away, from as, away from it being a technical process and more towards this kind of knowledge-based activity. Now, I've used a quote from um, Mutton in the chapter when he refers to this type of deep thinking as an imagining or visualising of what might happen. And in order to be able to do this, we need experience of teaching and we need a set of knowledge and skills that include very deep subject knowledge, um, knowledge of curriculum and examination requirements, knowledge of the resources, what they can do when they're available and understanding how pupils learn. Now, the, the list is a bit more extensive than this and there's further information about that within the chapter. So... One of the reasons for planning a lesson by filling in a template is because initially the beginning teacher might lack that detailed knowledge needed to teach. And this is where practice comes in, because I strongly believe that teaching lessons helps teachers appreciate uh, the role of lesson, the role that lesson planning plays in that effective teaching. So you kind of have to buy in at first and trust your mentors um, and your initial teacher education providers that you need to plan your lessons because it's only till you start planning lessons that I guess you start to appreciate um, the role and the need to think these things through and imagine and visualise how your lesson is going to take shape. But lesson planning is fluid and it will definitely change over time. But rather than listening to me, um, if you're not convinced, the best thing to do is to observe teachers teaching and think about all the things that they've had to consider before they taught the lesson. Now, to help you do this, in Chapter 12, the first task, 12.1, offers you a list of things to consider when observing an experienced teacher. So again, there's an opportunity here to pause the video and potentially yeah, have a look at that specific page in the chat in chapter 12.1. Make a note in your diary about an available time that you can set aside to observe an experienced teacher and focus on what it is they will have planned to make that lesson effective. So I'd asked you earlier to... Um, download or get your hands on a copy of a lesson plan template because we're now going to think about the elements of effective lessons and how they relate to the different titles, subheadings, boxes within your lesson planning template. Okay, so in this chapter I use the work of Pollard um, to identify eight key elements um, to, to lesson planning. Um, but obviously the chapter then exemplifies those in relation to design and technology lessons. So the first um, important thing that we think about is the lesson context. And this relates to the information about your class, the teaching room, the scheme of work or medium term plan to be covered in the lesson. And this is the bit that's really key for beginning teachers because often experienced teachers um, don't need to kind of think about this if you like because they know the schemes of work inside out. They, they've taught in the same classrooms um, for an extended period of time so they know their pupils, they know where resources are and all that kind of thing. But it's very important for you as a beginning teacher 
to, to kind of have in your mind, those contextual factors. The next thing is to think about the learning intentions and success criteria. So this is all about the purpose of the lesson, what you want pupils to learn and how, how you're going to assess them. How are you going to check that they've learned what you wanted them to learn? So, for example, the lesson plan in the chapter has the context of a year nine lesson towards the start of a unit of learning, but not the first lesson. And one of the learning intentions is to understand the principles of pattern cutting, um, which the teacher is going to assess through a success criteria statement, which says to, that the pupils need to measure, record and use specific measurements from the model to adapt the instructions for drawing out the waistcoat shape. So it's very clear to the teacher what they want the pupils to learn from, from the lesson and how they're going to do that and how they're going to check that they've done that, sorry. How they're going to do that is, is the next thing we need to think about, the phases of the lesson. Because once you know what you want pupils to learn, you then need to think about how you're going to structure the lesson to do this. The waistcoat lesson that I've just described is in six phases. And within those phases, we need to think about then the learning activities that we want pupils to engage in and the resources needed to do this. So for any D&T lesson, it's also important to think about health and safety issues related to, to those planned activities, because you're going to need to think about our pupils moving around the classroom. Is it safe to bring things out, etc. Now, again, in the example lesson, the pupils are going to work in small groups to apply um, their learning about measuring um, each other um, to gain those, to, to be able to record those specific measurements. And they do this after some direct instruction from their teacher. And the teacher will need resources to do the direct instruction and equally the pupils will need their own measuring tape to be able to take the measurements to apply that learning. Now, in addition to all of this, you might also need to think about other adults that are in the classroom, which might include um, the department technician or a teaching assistant. And for beginning teachers, this might also sometimes um, mean that someone needs to complete an observation on your teaching for feedback and so you need to think about where you want to position them within your already busy classroom. Now last but not least is part of the planning process is to think about the lesson evaluation. Which parts of your lesson do you want to think about after the lesson has been delivered? And so each of these points are discussed in a lot more detail in the chapter, um, spanning page 194 to 202. You will also find in the chapter task 12.5, which talks you through um, the activity of writing a lesson plan. So again, there is an opportunity here, if you wish to, to pause the video and find that specific page to record an opportunity to do this after the video is finished. So the third part of this session is talking about how, how we know if our lesson plan has worked. And in answer to this big question, we need to evaluate our lesson. So, you know, and it's important to have kind of thought about that as part of that planning process, because this is the third part of that plan, teach, evaluate model of lesson planning. So before you plan the, less, the next lesson for your group of learners, you need to ask yourself a series of questions. I've pasted some of the questions from the chapter here. So did my pupils meet the learning intentions? How do I know this? Were the teaching strategies apt? Was health and safety adequately addressed? Now, looking at the answers you've given to the evaluation questions at the end of a lesson can help you to think about what pupils have achieved and what they need to do in the next lesson in order to make the required progress. So that brings me towards the end. So in summary, we've looked at the role of lesson planning, key elements in lesson planning, um, and the lesson plan evaluation. And we've thought about how this fits into this model of planning, teaching and evaluating, which is part of every teacher's um, everyday experience, if you like, part of their role as a teacher. But it's very important for the student teacher because you know, we often don't value planning or buy into planning until we've taught lessons. 
And it's once we start teaching lessons that we begin to appreciate and also have our own kind of view on what we need to think about to plan those lessons. Now, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you want to delve more into the topic and find the tasks I have referred to in the video, then please read Chapter 12, Planning Lessons in Design and Technology by Sarah Davis. And you'll find that in Section 3 of the Learning to Teach Design and Technology Secondary School, 4th um, edition textbook edited by Alison Hardy. So thank you for watching the video and if you want to sign up for the webinar where you'll, you can meet with myself, Matt and Alison, authors of chapter 12, 13 and 14, then please sign up via Everbright. Uh, the link here is bit.ly backslash 3 capital I G capital W N 6 capital U.